Welcome back. Today, what I'm going to do is listen to and give my thoughts on Bandmate's first album, Made in Japan. If you are a Bandmate fan, you know by looking that this isn't the original Made in Japan original album cover. This is a reissue from 2018, where you have to hold it in just the right light to see the symbol on there because it's very, very faint. If you're not familiar with my channel, this isn't a music channel or a reaction channel. This is just my personal channel where I document my daily life. But here for the second time, I'm going to listen to a Bandmate album and say what I think about it. What I'd like to do, I know it's impossible, but what I would like to do is pretend like I'd never heard of Bandmate and they just came out and a friend handed me this album and I was listening to it with fresh ears. I know I can't pretend that because I already know a little bit about Bandmate. I've already heard some of their songs. I've already heard some of the songs on this album, but I really enjoy that feeling of hearing a band for the first time and getting to know it for with fresh ears. Like many of you, I have memories of when I heard certain bands for the first time. It depends on your age, which bands those were. For me, the one that stands out in my head the strongest is the Guns N' Roses album, Appetite for Destruction. I think I was a freshman or possibly sophomore in high school when a friend handed me the cassette and said, you got to listen to this. I loved it. I asked if I could borrow it. I took it home and I listened to the entire thing three or four times and read all the lyrics and whatnot. But anyway, that's the feeling that I'm trying to recapture here. I will say right off the bat, I have a complaint. I wish record companies would stop issuing these cardboard cases. This is not a plastic case, it's a cardboard case. And while it might be slightly more environmentally friendly, it's not the same size and shape as the plastic cases, which we already have, in my case, hundreds of, but most people at least have a few and you have them on a shelf, this doesn't line up with them just right. It's taller, it's a little bit narrower or wider or whatever. If you are going to do the cardboard cases, at least make them the same size and shape as the plastic cases. It does come with a fold-out lyric sheet. Um, in this case, almost all the lyrics are in Japanese, so it's not that helpful to me. And uh, as all lyric sheets are, they're really, really tiny, so kind of hard to see for my aging eyes. But anyway, because it is a reissue, this copy that I have has two songs that were not on the original album that came out in early 2014. But if I'm not mistaken, those two are at the end. So if we start here at the beginning, we should hear... What the people heard who first bought this album when it was first released and they put it in their CD player and pressed play, this is what they would have heard. Okay, right off the bat, there's kind of an interesting sound there. Perhaps the sound of an amp being plugged in or recreating that sound and then when the drums came in there's just a nice steady solid beat and then when the guitar comes in there's like a promise of energy of something more to come i like the intro it's it's a little bit memorable and i do understand that in these days the members of bandmade were not writing their own songs these songs were written for them by someone i assume assigned by the record company to to make songs for bandmade and let's go on just a little bit It does seem to me like on this one, the vocals took a lot longer to come in than they do on newer bandmate songs. There was a lot more of a musical introduction, which is fine with me. I, of course, like many rock fans, don't like the ones that have two minute introductions that slowly build and change and, and eventually you're bored before the lyrics ever come in. Uh, but this one was about right. It was what, 25, 30 seconds before the lyrics came in? I can also tell that it's mixed a little differently than the newer bandmate stuff. For example, the bass guitar is not as prominent as we've come to expect from the new bandmate stuff. At least it doesn't sound so to me. Let's keep going. Okay, there was a little bit of bass guitar there, right behind Psyche's vocals, kind of making a little run. Do 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 do. I'm smiling because I know what's coming. I have heard this song before. I like the way that the, the keys or whatever seem like they're kind of keying up for the chorus and it sounds like it's rising. You can feel the energy and it's building towards something. And I expect the chorus is right around the corner.
I did look up an English translation of these lyrics, and it seems like it's pretty much uh, an expansion of the part that's already in English, which basically what I get from it is that life isn't always going to go out of its way to make you feel better, but it's going to be okay. Everybody has worth. Everybody has value. Mistakes are part of life. That's all right. Let's keep going. Okay, the bass guitar is a lot more prominent in the second verse. I really need a recording of, I assume that was Miku saying, it's going to be okay. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that probably everybody should have that and you just press it, little tap on your phone screen or something and it just says, it's going to be okay. We all have moments in life when we need a reminder. Okay, and just like a lot of the later bandmate songs that we listened to on the previous video that I did about the the Conqueror album, one thing I kept noticing there is that their songs end, unlike so many of the rock songs that we heard growing up, which faded away on the album version or the radio version. This one in their very first album, it looked like they were already on that path. Whoever was writing these songs for them or producing the albums for them had, a, had that idea that a song should actually come to a conclusion, and I like that it did that there. Well, what I said I was partially doing here was trying to listen to this as if I was hearing Bandmate for the first time. And again, I know it's impossible, but I tried. I think if this was the first song that I heard from Bandmate, it would not hook me. And I hate to say it because I, I really like this band and their music. And I really like this song. I like its message. I like its upbeat tone. But the song itself, while it does have a catchy chorus and so on, and excellent musicianship all the way through, I don't know that it would have been the song that would have said, hey, you know, keep buying this group's stuff. But again, it's impossible to tell if that's what I would have thought. The next song is Evergreen. According to the lyric sheets, there looks like it's really tiny, but I don't think there is a single English word in it. Well, nope, I was wrong. It says, yeah, at the end of one of the choruses or verses. Oh, no, it's, it's yeah, at the end of every chorus. So that's that's at least three English words. I mean, it's the same word three times. All right, uh, let's see what Evergreen sounds like. I will say that even though the previous song is more my style of rock than this one is, this one seems a little softer than what I normally listen to. It's unique in a way that I think depending on my mood, if this was one of the first songs that I heard from Band Made, it might draw me in. And I don't even know what to call that the style or mood, the way that the, the melody is going here in the verse. There's a certain driving quality to it, but also relaxing, nostalgic. I'm not sure what it reminds me of. Probably some band I heard in the past. But yeah, it's got a it's got a hook there that's that's drawing me in. And I can hear the bass guitar in this one. I also want to say after having done Conqueror a few weeks ago, one thing that I noticed that's different in these albums that are whatever it is five, six years apart. I commented several times on the Conqueror album that each of the musicians was doing an, enough of an interesting thing that on their own, their, their lone track would be interesting to listen to. That was true of Misa on almost all of her bass lines in almost all of those songs. That was true of Akane on the drums in almost all of those songs. And that was true of the lead guitar in almost all of those songs and possibly even the rhythm guitar. That's not the case here. What I'm hearing here seems to follow the much more traditional uh, rock and roll or or even hard rock pattern of once the drummer finds their groove, they just stay there and it's the same drum groove through the entire verse. And then when the next verse comes, it's the same drum groove through that entire verse. And even though I the bass guitar is a little bit more prominent in this song, I think, than it was in the previous song, it still seems to be mostly just doing the bass line, which I assume is a factor of them being younger, less experienced, and having their songs written for them by other people.
And again, that one just ended. So that's great. Now that I think about it, I don't think there was a guitar solo in either one of those. So I don't know if uh, Konami was doing guitar solos back then. Maybe they weren't written in. Maybe she wasn't ready. I have no idea. But I liked both of those. They were two completely different songs, despite Psyche's voice being 10 years younger here than it is in the stuff that we're listening to now. It's still recognizable as her. And I understand she had a surgery on her throat, polyps or something like in 2017. So this was before that. But still, it sounds like Psyche. The next song is Key, K-E-Y, like you unlocking a door with a key. It also doesn't look like there are a lot of English lyrics in this one, except there is one line that says, I stand by myself. And it looks like the word key is in English at least once. And the word alone looks like each course starts with the word alone and ends with the word key. Right off the bat, it reminds me of some of the rock that was coming out in the early 2000s. I wasn't listening to a lot of rock at that time. I was working my tail off, as many of us were. But anyway, that's what came to my mind right there, just just the sound of that early 2000s, like 00 up through 05 or 08 or something. Okay, it brightened up there all of a sudden from the the dark, heavy starting, and then all of a sudden we went into a much higher, wider area of sound. But again, sounds completely unique. Okay, in that chorus, I heard a little bit more of what we, uh, of what I was talking about in Conqueror, where it sounded like Konami was playing a almost a separate melody in the background of the chorus. Of course, it it matched, it fit perfectly, and of course, we know she didn't write this, and she did write the later stuff. So maybe that's something that happened in a lot of other rock songs, and I just never noticed it before. But it it sure sounds like this is something that's marks a song as bandmate is that separate guitar melody that that's running through behind vocals and other music There's the guitar solo. All right, here again, I'm seeing echoes of the future band made. I know it's technically can't be an echo if it's in the past, but you know what I'm saying? The break where the drums and bass drop out for a second. Uh, later in the song, they do that a lot in their modern songs. There was a very short, crisp, really well-performed guitar solo there, a little bit of a vocal break and a change-up. A lot of these things that I've come to expect uh, as being in every band main song in their newer stuff, I think this is kind of an early, like an outline of, of what that would be. Well, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Three songs in, I don't know that I would have been hooked on the first one, but by the end of the third song, I've got enough differences and enough interesting things happening. Catchy melodies, really skillful musicianship by all of the members, good harmonies in places, change-ups. I don't think this would have the ability to hook me as quickly as I got hooked when I first started listening to Bandmade about a year ago, but I think it's on the right path. And and again, there's definitely the outline of what Bandmade would eventually become here in these songs that were written by other people. The next song is By My Tears, B-Y-E. And a quick scan of the lyrics says that there's zero English in this one, which that's fine. Let's see what it sounds like. That sounds epic.
Wow, the the intro to that song was was unlike anything I remember from a bandmate song. The really heavy, slow, emphatic drum beats with just a kind of a, an oozing buzz underneath that. And then those first slow vocals that came in. It sounded like this was about to build to something big. When it finally did go up to speed, it wasn't quite what I was expecting and it almost didn't fit. But let's keep going. <laughs> Okay, that chorus seemed a lot bouncier than I thought it would based on that that slow epic build up at the beginning. But I was I was pointing at my ear there. I was hearing the guitar. I don't know if it was a lead guitar or rhythm and I know I'm pretty sure that Konami played both back then. Uh, Konami's usually doing the lead and the right, but here there was some guitar work uh, doing interesting things in the left. I don't know what they're singing about. I assume it has something to do with their tears and saying goodbye to them. But yeah, this one is a really interesting mix of, uh, of rock and pop. There it is again. Okay, that guitar solo was, I think, longer than average for Bandmade. A lot of it sounded like traditional hard rock guitar solos, even I, I might say the hair metal guitar solos from the late 80s, early 90s. Sounded really good. I like it. I'm still thrown off a little bit between, uh, because of the switches from that that really epic bum, 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 bum sound leading into the song and then partway through it again, but then switching into more of a poppy, bouncy rock lyric type thing. <laughs> That was really good. I liked that song. Once again, it was completely unique and differentiated from the other songs. And that epic opening, which was echoed there at the end, decent guitar solo that was a throwback to the music that I loved 30, 40 years ago. The further I go into this album, the I, I'm increasingly convinced that if this was the first I heard of Bant made, I, I might be a fan by now. And the next one is Knocking on Your Heart. Um, it uh, uh, again doesn't look like there's much English in this one. I can see the words day by day. Uh, possible again it's really tiny but i think that says battle door there's a uh, several repetitions of the word door very late in the song okay so there's battles there's doors so let's see Okay, already just a few seconds into this song, you can tell it's different from the other bandmate songs. This one has a different feel to it, a different rhythm. Um, I'm not mistaken, this is one of the first ones, the first one on this album where we got the double vocals. I've been hearing Miku in all these songs, or most of them, but here's one where Psyche got part of the verse and Miku got part of the verse. It's a recognizable change. So that was nice. And if I've already listened to those first four and started becoming a fan, and then I got to this one, I'd be okay with it. I haven't heard the whole song yet, but I, I'm going to say that of the five I've heard so far, this one's my least favorite.
okay. It, it, that wasn't bad. When I said it's my least favorite, that's an unfair comparison to the other bandmate songs. But I could see, I mean, this is a fun, bouncy, driving song. It it would work well for, I, I think, a part of the mix for a road trip or a summer drive. And that's kind of a joke because the last song on the album is called Summer Drive. But that one part in the middle caught my attention uh, when they were doing just the, uh, with the, most of the instruments dropped out and mostly just vocals in the beat. I think that was Miku singing there where it got, all of a sudden it changed in tone and it got really intense and it started rising and I thought something epic was about to happen or destructive, but it just changed right back into the rest of the song. But it caught my attention. It, it was memorable. I'm going to remember that part of the song. Okay, we're going on to side B of this album, which is a joke because it's a CD and there is no side B. But the sixth song is Big Dad. As far as I can tell, the only English words in this one are Big Dad right at the end, Big Bag a couple of times. And it looks like the word magic is in there. <laughs> Well, that's Miku. You can kind of just, I can just picture her hand movements during that opening. Put a little bit of really high soft bass in there. Now it's really low. Well, that one was a nice light change of pace compared to the other songs in the album. It was a little bit of slower rhythm. There was a really soft break in the middle. And as far as I can tell, all the lead vocals were sung by Miku. There were a couple of places where there were harmonies, but I think on the recording anyway, it was probably her because it sounded very similar to the lead that it was harmonizing with. Although I suppose somebody else might have done that part, but it was done in such a way the the rhythm of it, the, the way that she was singing, it's definitely recognizable as her from the future songs and even from her speeches and talks during the live shows or whatever that uh, you can just picture her facial expressions and hand gestures and body movements during this song. Uh, so uh, whoever wrote it, it, it seemed to fit her perfectly, or at least fit who she became. The next song's title is in Japanese, but I believe it translates as Before Dawn. I looked that up before I started this because I wasn't sure how to pronounce that or what it was. But yeah, it, I think that the title of this next song is Before Dawn. And I don't think there are any English words in it at all. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Right off the bat, it sounded very similar to the previous song, except with the obvious difference that Psyche's singing this one instead of Miku. The, the tone of the guitar, and in fact, the rhythm of the guitar sounded very similar to the way that the last one started, at least to me. Maybe just slightly faster. But also her voice brings uh, a little bit less, I don't even know how to say it, but it, it's less feathery and cute like Miku's and, and more cutting in a good way. But it's definitely recognizable as her. Let's see where this one goes. know exactly what Psyche's vocal range is, but this one sounds like she's pushing near the top of it uh, before you switch into head voice or falsetto, whatever that's called, but of her normal chest voice or whatever, this sounds like it's pushing the upper limits of it. She's straining to hit some of that. I mean, it sounds good, but I, I can feel, I feel that. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what it feels like. It feels like she's pushing the, the ceiling of her, of her voice there. <laughs> Even in the verse, it sounds like she's staying pretty high.
Well, that one just uh, felt like it cut off suddenly. I'm sure musicians or songwriters will tell me I'm being ridiculous or wrong, but that felt like kind of a mirror image to the song that just preceded it. Even though the the tone and the mood were, were different between them, the rhythms felt very similar to me and the outline of the song felt very similar to me, except again, one was more lighthearted and cute and fluffy, and the other one was a little bit more possibly even... There was some longing or pain in the second one, but that's just my impression of them. Those two felt more similar to me than usually bandmate songs do, especially ones that are put right next to each other on an album. I think if I had to pick one, I'd pick, I think the second one was maybe slightly more my favorite. We have three songs left on this album. The next one is Forward, which once again, looks like there aren't any English lyrics. Uh, let's see what this one sounds like. It's that the cold I I think that one was the slowest beginning of any of the songs on this album, but it sounded like they had something important to say at the beginning. I don't know what they were saying, but it, from the tone and the, the emphasis that they put on the lyrics there at the beginning, it sounded like it was something very important. And then there was the change up when it went into the, the hey parts. That's Miku, right? Kanami. Was it just me or did Psyche have the entire first verse and Miku had the entire second verse? Now I know there are times, there are certain notes, there are certain phrases that they both sound very similar to each other on, but I think most of the time, the, just the way that the words are formed in the mouth, you, know, you can kind of tell which one's which, but, but yeah, I, I think the first one was almost entirely Psyche and the second one was almost entirely Miku. <laughs> Okay, that part was really interestingly arranged to me, and it did remind me a lot of some of the stuff that they do in future bandmate songs. For example, the, the song dropping out at the very end of the guitar solo and going into lyrics without the rest of the music. That part, for example. The guitar solo sounded different, unique, not like something I've ever heard her do before. I don't even know what to compare it to, That where it kind of just went up off. It was definitely different than her normal guitar solos. <laughs> I heard Misa doing something interesting right there. Yeah, as far as I can tell, all these songs so far, they have, have ended instead of fading out. So I really do like that. And I can't pinpoint what makes me feel this, but uh, as I said earlier, I think this one felt like it ha they had something important to say in it. I, I don't know what it was. And now we have the two bonus tracks that were not on made in Japan originally in 2014, they were added on the re-release in 2018. But at least one of them came out in 2014 on that single, and it is a Japanese title, but I believe it's translated as Love, Passion, Matador. And if I've read my band made history correctly, that came out on a single in late 2014, so after this album. All right, well, let's see what that one is. I like it. Not like band made at all. Oh, 
right off the bat, it feels very Latin, and Mises is getting to do some really interesting things on the very low end of the bass. I think I remember hearing somewhere that Konami said one of her influences or inspirations was Carlos Santana, and in which case I think I hear a little bit of that influence here of the way the guitars are going in this song. But certainly the rhythm of this song is, is different from anything else that I've ever heard my band made. More different than the other songs are different. <laughs> Certainly, if you were the dancing type of person, this would be the song to dance to. I'm going back for that. Nice. Very short. I don't know what drives me to say this, but despite this being so clearly different from all the band-made music that would follow in a different way, it reminds me more of future band-made than the rest of this album does. And I don't know why. Maybe it was the little trade-off where you could tell it switched from Psyche to Miku. Maybe it's the fact that Misa is definitely doing important stuff on the bass in the background. It was different. It wasn't part of that album originally. It, it's part of a different thing. They left and did some shows and whatever they did, and then they came back to the studio. And I don't know if it was mixed or produced by a different person, or if the musicians had slightly more input into this one. Uh, there's also several parts where, again, I think Konami is playing both guitar parts. Uh, she's doing two different trading off, almost like a call and response between the two guitars, one in the left ear, one in the right ear. Uh, one's going da-da-da-da, and the other one's going da-da-da-da-da. But yeah, because of those factors, that it feels a lot more like future band made than the rest of this uh, Made in Japan album. Also, it seems like uh, Psyche sings more confidently here. Like she's in a group. She she's, feels more like she knows what she's doing in this song. Yeah, that part to the ending of the guitar solo where the drums kind of come in with a almost like a snare roll and then just boom popping right back into the the chorus i assume that was the chorus they definitely feel more polished and confident in this song than they did in some of the other ones some of the other ones sounded like they were maybe reading sheet music on a stand i don't know if i would have noticed that if i didn't know ahead of time that this song was originally not part of that album it's always hard to tell when you draw a conclusion like that but you already knew the conclusion but it feel it to me it feels different and again that might be because i already knew that it was part of a separate project <laughs> I, I, they ended the song on a guitar solo. That doesn't happen very often. And that was three guitar solos, wasn't it? I mean, three guitar features, each one fairly short. That last one seemed like she saved some stuff for that one. Yeah, I'm going with, it wouldn't have mattered if I, whether or not I knew ahead of time that this was from a separate project. This, this one felt, but it feels more polished, more professional, more confident. This, this is a newer, better band made than the Made in Japan band made. All right, there is one more bonus track left called Summer Drive. I don't know what album or single or EP that this was originally on. It does look like it has slightly more English lyrics than the other ones, but those English lyrics are almost entirely, whoa, oh, 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 oh. it's summer day, and whoa, oh, 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 there's one place where it says, be shy, call me, and the rest is in Japanese. Okay. 
Well, let's see if this one fits with the rest of the Made in Japan album or if it feels different. Well, I, I'm going to start that over again. Uh, that was Miku, right? And uh, it feels different. Let's go back. It seemed like it started off with a burst of energy. Go, Misa. Okay, this one also, just like the previous one, Love, Passion, Matador, doesn't sound like any other bandmate song. And but I, I say that about every bandmate song, but those two, these two, Love, Passion, Matador, and Summer Drive, seem more outside that normal universe of bandmate. And May goes all over the place in that universe, but these two feel like they're outside of it. I don't know that, uh, I don't know whether that after that first album, they were exploring slightly different directions, seeing what, uh, what they felt like doing, which direction they felt like heading. But this one feels really fun, really upbeat. And again, just like the last track feels like they're more confident, more polished. This time they came into the studio with a plan we're confident and they weren't just we got to make these songs for this album because the record company told us to the, these two definitely felt better than that even if it was the record company telling them to i don't know and the bass is a lot more prominent here This one and the last the last couple, actually, it felt like the, the bass has definitely been elevated in the mix. And, and here Misa is really going at it on the bass. This song's really well put together. I wouldn't say that this is my style of rock. It, it, it sounds almost like beach rock to me, but but I like it and I'm impressed by it. It, it sounds like whoever wrote this uh, knew what they were doing. And of course, the people that played the instruments and did the singing knew what they were doing too. That, that's some pretty fast lyrical stuff there for Miko. Well, that's different. Almost sounds like a bird tweeting. Okay, that guitar solo did sound a little bit more like future Konami, especially because Misa was also soloing on her bass in the background. That's one thing that I was missing on some of those solos earlier on this album, is that they sounded like traditional rock guitar solos. Whereas this one sounded like what we noticed in future bandmate stuff, where while Konami's soloing, Misa's pretending that it's her solo, and she's doing that too. It's just lower in the mix and it's a lower frequency, so it doesn't stand out as much to your ears, but it's happening. And I, I heard that here. Oh yeah, Misa definitely had a bigger part in this song. And I think I might not have mentioned Akane in this entire video. And that's not to say that there was anything wrong with the drumming here. 
It just didn't stand out to me like it does in future bandmate recordings. As far as I can tell, she didn't do here what I mentioned that she did in 2019 and so on, which is she doesn't like to do the same thing more than a few measures, and constantly throughout a song, she will change up what she's doing. It always sounds good, and it's always noticeable, and it always fits, and it always helps whatever else is happening in the song, but she changes it regularly. In this one, I felt like she was doing the thing that all the rock drummers do, which is just keep the beat at the back occasionally have a little bit of a run or a change up when you switch parts of the song, but otherwise she was just solid in the background. I think I can conclude that, that every bit of this album foreshadowed what Bandmade could become. And I didn't think it at the beginning when I first started listening, but now I'm convinced that if this was the first I heard of Bandmade and if it was 2014 and somebody handed me this album, I think I would want to hear more from this band. For one thing, every single song brought something new, especially those last two, which I know they wouldn't have been on there in 2014. But the first eight, which were on the album in 2014, were enough different from one another and each one different from what I would have been listening to at the time that I'm convinced that I would have become a Bandmade fan based on this album alone, although there's no way to prove that. But I'm glad that I became a Bandmade fan when I did and that I was able to get this re-release version shipped to me all the way from Japan. If you made it all the way through this, I really appreciate it. If you hadn't heard some of these old songs before, as you've noticed, they're quite a bit different from the future Bandmade stuff. I'm looking forward to the announcement that I heard recently, which is that there's another new Bandmade album coming out in 2024, and supposedly there will be collaborations with other artists. That sounds really exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending your time with me, and thank you for being a fellow Bandmade fan. I'll see you next time.